Hello there, my name is Yorkie and welcome to the channel for episode 15 of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Just before we get into the video that's going to give you all the juicy details in order to improve your lap times around this track, I just wanted to say if you're new to the channel and enjoying this in-depth track guide series then please consider subscribing to the channel, it will be very much appreciated and if you want to follow me on other social media pages my links are down in the description below. So getting into this 15th episode we are going to be taking a look at Suzuka in Japan. The track's length is 3.61 miles which equates to 5.81 kilometers, has a total of 18 corners and will require a setup with medium to high downforce and medium to hard suspension. And then your key overtaking areas, the action areas are going to be turns 1, turns 11, turn 13, turn 15 and turn 16. So as usual we're going to start off by taking a look at the pit entry here at Suzuka. It's going to be on the inside to the right of the final corner just after that final chicane. That's where you can find the entry slip road and as you come through there you're going to be needing to brake and slow the car down before the pit entry line that is situated here. You can reference the barrier, the Armco barrier that is there on the right hand side that ends. That is going to be the start of the pit lane speed limiter. And then when it comes to the exit this is going to be your reference point here which is going to be the end of the concrete wall separating the pit lane from the race track. At this point you can disengage the pit speed limiter and accelerate away out onto the track providing that you stay to the right of the pit exit line that extends down towards turn one. Coming on to the main part of the track now, we're going to start off with turn one and this is going to be our breaking point for this first corner. It's about 50-55 meters before the turn referencing the tarmac slip road there on the left hand side just before the 50 meter board. We're going to ride the brake a little bit as we start to turn in and drop down a couple of gears into third or fourth aiming to hook up the apex just off the inside curb around about here. You want to try and carry a bit of the speed coming through this corner but not too much as you're going to have to do a little bit more braking so just skim the curb in the dry conditions but avoid it entirely in the wet. We then immediately come into the next braking zone for turn two. You want to try and straight line this braking zone as much as possible. Try and get the car slowed down and try and open up the corner for yourself. So you're going to run out towards the outside curb there on the exit of turn one. We're going to be shifting the car down into first or second gear and turning the car in. Just letting the car glide towards our apex which is going to be fairly late in the corner hooking it up around about here. You can use the inside curb in the dry conditions however you you want to take caution with it in the wet because it may cause you to potentially lose grip and lead yourself going into a spin but we want to try and get a good drive coming off the exit of the corner tracking out nice and wide making use of the exit curb in the dry conditions but avoid it in the wet just to avoid any potential traction loss there just be careful of the extra serrated curb and the painted tarmac beyond that venturing out too far out there could potentially see yourself with a track limits infringement Next up is turn three which will be the entry to the S's section which is a series of left and right that all flow into one another. There isn't any real need for braking between each of the left and right, instead just lift off the car and allow it to coast on through the corner. So coming from the right hand side of the track we're going to come into our first apex of turn three here. We're going to be hooking up this apex on this inside curb using third gear, use it in both the dry and wet conditions. The corner has moderate amount of camber so use that to your advantage but as you come out through the exit of this you're going to immediately transition into turn four the following right hander. This is going to be your apex that you're aiming to hook up just here on the inside curb. This right hander has a slight amount of camber to it and in the dry conditions you'll be wanting to ride that inside curb and as you can see noted in the wet conditions you want to be taking caution just because you may be picking up the throttle a little bit coming through the corner and you may be on the curb when you do so which could potentially hurt your traction. We then transition into the left hander of turn five again another third gear corner with a fairly late apex moderate amount of camber to it and once again in the dry conditions you can be using and riding that inside curb just do take caution with it in the wet conditions we then immediately come into turn six the following right hander this is a fairly long right hander with a relatively late apex that you can see marked here in some cars you may want to drop down into second gear just to help you come off the corner a little bit better and as you probably just saw noted you can use the inside curb in the dry conditions however do once again take caution in the wet. This next transition between the two corners is very very important. As you come out the exit of turn 6 you want to hang towards the middle of the circuit and bring the car back over to the right hand side to try and open up turn 7. 
just as you start turning in for that left hander you want to lift off the accelerator just a little bit to help the car hook in towards our apex this is going to be the apex point here relatively early on in the corner you should be in third gear there's a moderate amount of camber here you can use the inside curb in the dry conditions however you want to take caution with it in the wet you then want to accelerate from this point out of the turn and track the car out wide towards the exit curb out here the corner does continue left so do keep that in mind don't completely unwind the wheel otherwise you will find yourself drifting out into the grass and the gravel trap and as you could probably expect when it comes to the curb usage you can make use of this exit curb in the dry conditions in the wet however do avoid it entirely Next up we have the braking zone for turn 8 which is going to be about 55-60 metres before the corner. Look for the 50 metre board on the left hand side there and brake just before that, shifting the car down into third gear and turning the car in. This is going to be our apex at the apex curb on the inside here. Some cars will allow you to take the curb a little bit more aggressively than others but you do want to be relatively cautious as it can potentially bounce you out wide coming off the exit of this corner. You can use this inside curb though in both the dry and also the wet conditions so you don't need to worry about that there. Providing you haven't clobbered the curb too much, you should be able to keep the car out of the gravel. There is obviously the rumble strip curb with a little bit of painted tarmac beyond that and then some astroturf. In the dry conditions, you'll be able to use this pretty much no problem. However, you'll want to be avoiding it pretty much entirely in the wet conditions to avoid any traction loss. We then come into the next braking zone for the next right hander which will be turn 9. There's no real reference point for the start of the braking here in this corner so it's mostly just left down to fill. But we brake hard, shift down into second gear and turn the car in. This is going to be our apex point that we're looking to hook up just here. Again some cars will allow you to take a little bit more curb than others but generally as there's a moderate amount of camber in this corner you don't necessarily need to climb up all over that inside curb. If you do want to use it though you can do so in both the dry and wet conditions. Just like the previous corner, the exit is comprised of a rumble strip curb with some painted tarmac and then astroturf. Beyond that is a gravel trap and then also a tyre barrier that runs closer towards the circuit as you get further through the exit of the turn. In the dry conditions you can use the exit curb pretty much no issue, however in the wet conditions you will want to avoid it entirely to avoid any traction loss. Next up is the braking zone for turn 11. We're going to miss turn 10 because it's just a little right handed kink and as you're actually coming through that that's when you're going to be getting hard on the brakes trying to keep the car in a straight line as possible and over to the right hand side of the circuit. Shifting the car all the way down into first gear and turning the car in you mainly want to aim for a late apex. You can double apex this corner if you potentially want to but the late apex is going to be the key one as it will give you a better drive coming off the corner and onto the next section of the track. You can use the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions if you can make it there don't worry too much if you can't as you can see there's a moderate to high amount of camber and that will help you through the turn as well coming out through the exit we're going to track the car out wide to the right hand side of the circuit out here and make use of this exit curb we can make full use of it in the dry conditions however in the wet you'll be wanting to avoid the curb pretty much entirely as it is a rumble strip curb and there is some painted time out beyond that and that will hurt our traction coming off the corner there's one thing to note as you come through the sweeping right hander coming off the exit of the hairpin. Stay off the inside curb at the entry to the chicane that's there on the right hand side. We don't need to use the chicane. Stay off the curb. There's a nasty bump there. If you hit that it's going to spin you round and you're going to be making friends with a wall. So next up is the braking zone for turn 13. Just as we come up and see the strip of tarmac that extends from the right hand side of the circuit to the wall up there, that is going to be our reference for our braking point. Get on the brakes just as we see that and shift down into third gear, turning the car in and aiming to hook up our apex for the first part of spoon curve here. As well as using the downforce of the car, you do also have a moderate amount of camber to help you tuck into the apex. And then feel free to use that inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions. Conditions. When it comes to the exit of the first part of Spoon Curve, you want to be using the exit curb out here, however you don't want to be running out too wide. Although there's a lot of runoff, you want to be staying on the circuit ready for the braking zone for the second part of Spoon Curve. And as always with exit curbs, you can make use of it in the dry conditions, however do avoid running it in the wet. We then come into the second part of Spoon Curve and this is going to be a relatively short braking zone here. You just need to be light on the brakes as you're going to be continuing to steer through the corner, dropping 
the car down into second gear and tucking it in towards our apex. There's no real reference point for the braking zone, so it's just done by Phil. When we get to our apex, we're going to be looking up a relatively late apex on the inside curb around about here. Despite the moderate amount of camber in this corner, the track does start to drop down away from you, which will cause the car to start understeering as you're getting on the power and out through the exit, so do be careful of that. When it comes to the curb usage, make use of the inside curb in both the dry and also wet conditions. We then come to the exit curb and we want to make full use of the curbing out here to try and give ourselves the best run onto the long straight. Once again this curbing does feature a FRA serrated curb with some painted tarmac beyond that and then the gravel. Obviously keep yourself out of the gravel. Use this exit curb in the dry conditions and then avoid it in the wet. Next up is the infamous left-hander of 130R. There is a little bit of a braking zone to this corner. Just as you're getting to the 50 meter board, just give a very slight small dab of the brake. And with some cars, you may want to be dropping it down into fifth gear, maybe a little bit more comfortable rather than carrying the car through in sixth. This is going to be our apex point just here. You basically want to be skimming the inside curb in the dry conditions, using the downforce and the slight amount of camber helping you through the corner. And then in the wet conditions you want to be pretty cautious with using the inside curb although some cars will allow you to do it with pretty much no issue we then come to the exit curb where out here we want to be making full use of it obviously don't venture out too far because that will cause you to get a track limits infringement instead try and keep two wheels on the red and white rumble strip curbing there's plenty of runoff out here if you do need to run out wide and try and potentially save the car of course avoid using this exit curb in the wet conditions conditions. Next up we have the final braking zone of the lap which is going to be the braking zone for the final chicane. The braking point is actually about 110 meters before the corner so just before we get to that 100 meter board get hard on the brakes and shift the car all the way down to first gear. We're then going to turn in and attack the curbs in both the right and also the left hander of turns 16 and 17 respectively. In some cars you'll be able to climb up all over these curbs and make use of the green painted tarmac there on the inside. Others you'll need to be a little bit more cautious and step more to the red and white curbing just because that green painted tarmac is sunk down a little bit and hitting the back side of the curb could potentially unsettle the car. Make use of both the curbs in both the dry and wet conditions. And then finally coming off the exit of the chicane, we're going to be coming through the right hander of turn 18. We can make use of the rumble strip and green painted tarmac that is out here on the outside. We're going to be starting to turn right as we go through that final corner. Make use of the curb in the dry conditions, however avoid it in the wet as it is a traction zone. And then you want to take the path of least resistance to then run to the line to complete your lap. So now that we completed the breakdown, let's take a look at the lap at full racing speed.
main. This is me, your Russell Bass. So now that we've set a pretty decent lap around Suzuka, I just want to finish off the episode by saying please be mindful of what your car and car setup is capable of. Some cars will be able to brake a little bit later than others. Some cars will be able to take curves better than others. It's obviously going to be dependent on your car setup. It might have a slight factor as well. And then obviously the weather conditions are going to play a factor too. Obviously I've tried to highlight these things where possible, but please do take note and obviously obviously apply accordingly to the session, race or conditions that you're driving in. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification, you'll be notified each time a video goes live and you won't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you back for the next one. Until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.